हेलो स्टूडेंट्स दिस इज पल्लवी अग्रवाल एंड टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट लाइट ट्रांसमिशन थ्रू ऑप्टिकल फाइबर आई हैव ऑलरेडी अपलोडेड द एक्सप्लेनेशन ऑफ दिस टॉपिक इन हिंदी टुडे वी विल डिस्कस दिस टॉपिक इन इंग्लिश प्रिंसिपल ऑफ टोटल इंटरनल रिफ्लेक्शन इज यूज्ड इन फाइबर ऑप्टिक्स और वी कैन से दैट द फाइबर ऑप्टिक्स वर्क्स ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ टोटल इंटरनल रिफ्लेक्शन द कम्युनिकेशन सिग्नल्स आर ट्रांसमिटेड थ्रू ऑप्टिकल फाइबर इन फाइबर ऑप्टिक्स फॉर बेटर अंडरस्टैंडिंग ऑफ दिस प्रिंसिपल यू हैव टू बिकम फैमिलियर विद सम एडिशनल पॉइंट और सम एडिशनल इंफॉर्मेशन That is critical angle and total internal reflection. Do you know about this? If yes, that's very good. And if no, then don't worry. We will discuss. So, for light propagating from denser medium to rarer medium, if the refraction angle is ninety degree, then corresponding angle of incidence is known as critical angle. and if any light ray is incident at the interface of two medium with an angle greater than critical angle then when it is completely reflected to denser medium this phenomena is known as total internal reflection now we should come back to our today's topic that is optical fiber so optical fiber has a dense core surrounded by less dense cladding in this figure as you can see that the inner portion it is known as core and the outer portion is known as cladding core is dense and cladding is less dense the light ray trans transmitting through inner core is totally reflected back to the core instead of refracting in less dense cladding less the reflective index of core is mu1 and reflective index of cladding is mu2 and mu0 is the reflective index of that medium in which light ray is incident at an angle ia for total internal reflection the incident angle at the surface of core cladding must be greater than critical angle now from the figure at point b the light ray is incident with an angle ic that is known as critical angle and after refraction the light ray become parallel to the core cladding surface so the refraction angle is 90 degree here at point b we can see that the incident angle is ic and the refraction angle is 90 degree this is our ray and this is normal so the angle between these two lines is 90 degree so our refraction angle is 90 degree now by snell's law at point b at this point you have to know that what is snell's law so snell's law states that the ratio of sines of incident angle and refraction angle is a constant that constant is known as reflective index of first medium with respect to second medium so here sin ic upon sin 90 degree is equals to 1 mu 2 and we can write 1 mu 2 as mu 2 upon mu 1 we all know that the value of sin 90 degree is 1 so here we get sin ic is equals to mu 2 upon mu 1 this is equation 1 now again from the figure in triangle abd angle ab and d is equals to ic angle dba is equals to 90 degree so angle bad angle bad 
B is 90 minus IC because the sum of three angles of any triangle is 180 degree. So if this is IC and this is 90 degree, so this is 90 minus IC. Now at point A, the angle of incidence is IA and the angle of refraction is 90 minus IC. Again, according to Snell's law, at point A, we can write sin IA upon sin 90 minus IC is 0 mu 1. And we can write 0 mu 1 is equal to mu 1 upon mu naught. Mu naught and mu 0 are same. Now, by trigonometry, we all are familiar with that sin 90 minus theta is equal to cos theta. So, here we can write sin IA upon cos IC is equal to mu1 upon mu0. Now, by the cross multiplication, we get the value of cos IC. Cos IC is equal to mu0 upon mu1 into sin IA. That is equation number second. Now, we have equation number first and equation number second. Now, what we need to do? We need to square the both equations and then add them together. So, on squaring and adding equation first and equation second, we get sin square IC plus cos square IC is equal to mu2 mu square upon mu1 square plus mu0 square upon mu1 square sin square IA. Now, by trigonometrical formula, we know that the value of sin square theta plus cos square theta is equal to 1. So, from here we get 1 is equal to 1 upon mu1 square mu2 square plus mu0 square sin square IA. By simple rearranging, we get mu1 square minus mu2 square is equal to mu0 square sin square IA. Sin IA is equal to under root mu1 square minus mu2 square upon mu0 square. From here, sin IA is equal to sin inverse mu1 square minus mu2 square upon mu0 square. In this way, we get the value of angle IA. As we know that for total internal reflection, the value of angle ABD must be greater than the critical angle IC. For this, the value of incident angle must be less than angle IA. So, the value of angle IA obtained by this equation is maximum value of incident angle. So, if any light ray is incident at an angle less than IA, then total internal reflection takes place in the inner core or inner core of optical fiber and our light ray is transmitted from one place to the another place without any loss in the intensity of light. So that is the principle of light transmission through optical fiber. I hope this video is going to be very helpful for all of you and if you have any queries, any questions, then please let me know and if you like this video, then please like, share and subscribe my channel. Thank you. Thanks for watching.